The stadiums of Latin America have some of the most interesting designs in the world. Brazil is no exception, and it's arguably the country that's most synonymous with football, having won five World Cups. But before we get into the stadiums, today's video is once again sponsored by the OneFootball app. Whether you support Man United, Barcelona or Corinthians, OneFootball's got you covered. You can choose to follow your favourite teams and competitions for a customised experience, including all of these competitions in Brazil alone. And of course there is a plethora of fixtures, results and highlights available. So if you would like to download the OneFootball app for free, please click the link in the description below this video. With that being said, let's get into the stadiums. Estadio Independencia. It was originally built for Brazil's first World Cup. I'm a big fan of the stadium's three-sidedness. Not only do those living in the surrounding hills get a free view of the game, but more importantly, those in the stadium get a view of the surrounding hills. And in each of the interior corners of the stadium, there are these spectacular, uh, glass boxes? I don't know, but they look great. Arena de Baxada. Well, it kind of looks like a fully enclosed version of the last one. It even has a retractable roof, and it was the first stadium in South America to have one. Although the outside is a little box-like, it still looks fine, but the interior is even better, and due to the translucent nature of the roof and walls, there is plenty of natural light even when the roof is closed. Estadio Antonio Accioli Now onto something that's a little more humble, and by that I mean, not quite as good. But, up until recently, it was even smaller. It was renovated just last year, and was turned into a proper four-sided stadium. Although it's very simple, it looks alright, particularly the red, black and white colour scheme that matches the team's kit. Mineiro if you're a fan of PSG, you might see some similarities with your own stadium. The exterior has that same sort of design, consisting of a concrete shell made up of dozens of fins, for want of a better word. The interior is a lot more toned down, but I think those white and grey seats look great. Itaipava Arena Fontanova Built on the site of the old Estadio Fontanova, and made up of three tiers of bright aqua blue seating for the most part, with the exception of a partially open end that allows for views of a nearby lagoon, which is a pretty unique feature, the way the roof continues but the seating doesn't. It also allows for a stage to be put there for concerts. Castello. Another one of the many that was renovated for the 2014 World Cup. They got rid of everything from the original stadium other than the top tier of seating. It's a pretty good looking stadium. There's plenty of glass used on the exterior and on the inside, although it's fairly monochromatic, it looks great. Arena Conda. Not to be confused with Anaconda, the ridiculously huge snake that can be found in Brazil. Like, come on, that, come on, that shouldn't exist. Back to a much more simple stadium with this one. Three sides of the field are made up of uncovered seats, consisting of concrete steps for seating. While the lucky people on the western side of the ground not only are undercover, but get to sit on proper seats. Although if you're sitting over on the eastern side, you get a pretty decent panoramic view of the city's high-rises. Neo Kimika Arena. Firstly, I really like how the ends behind each goal have been kept open. This was initially done so temporary seating could be added for the 2014 World Cup, but I like how they've kept it like that. And although it might not be the most effective at sheltering the spectators, I do like how the roof canopy sort of reaches over to the other side. The one thing I would have changed if I was the designer is I'd have a mix of black and white seats to match the Corinthians kits because there is a lot of white going on.
Arena Pantanal. Once again, it's another very open design. This is because, due to the tropical climate of this part of the world, it's necessary that you have good airflow throughout the stadium. Whereas in most of Europe, you'd probably be wanting to block the wind. It's another stunner of a stadium, both inside and out. On the inside, I particularly like the corners, where you see those big pillars that are holding up the roofs, as well as a grass section below. The Maracana. Not to be confused with the... Uh, but it shouldn't be confused with that shit though, because it's one of the most iconic football stadiums in the world, having hosted two World Cup finals, first in 1950, then in 2014. The former having been attended by nearly 200,000 fans, which is mind-boggling. The exterior is not one of the better looking in this league, but it's fine. On the inside is one big bowl of blue, yellow and white mosaic seating. Arena do Gremio. I'm liking the extensive use of blue glass on the exterior. On the inside there's even more blue. All of the seats in fact. Except for one section that doesn't have seats at all, but terracing instead. It sticks out like a sore thumb, but it was specifically requested by the team's fanatical supporters. And after all, isn't that what stadiums are all about? Oh. And not too far away is the Stadio Beira Rio. Well, there's no let up on the extravagant exteriors, but although the stadium looks very elaborate, it's actually a fairly simple stadium on the inside. Something that you might see all across South America. And that's exactly what it was before it was jazzed up for the 2014 World Cup. But it's still pretty cool though and it's situated in a nice spot by the river, which is what the name Beira Rio means. Estadio Alfredo Giocconi. Although this one isn't flashy and doesn't boast the amenities that the last few have, I actually really like it. It has a certain rustic charm. But what I really love about it is how behind each goal, you get a view of something completely different. The south side offers views of the city, whereas the north side offers views of a grassy hill and the nature reserve behind it. It's the yin and yang of stadiums. Allianz Park. Out of all the Allianz stadiums, and there are a lot of them, this one, hmm. I was gonna say it was my favorite, but Allianz Arena is pretty good as well. But it's certainly my favorite exterior. It looks incredible. The way that metallic facade shimmers in the sunlight in particular. On the inside, the shape is rather peculiar. One end is rounded and one end is squared off. This is due to the fact that the old stadium that occupied the site had more of an oval shape. And they've obviously tried to incorporate that into the new stadium to reduce cost. Estadio Nabi Abi Chedid. Home to one of the many Red Bull loan teams having been taken over in 2019 and being promoted that same year. If that doesn't prove definitively that Red Bull gives you wings, then I don't know what would. With Red Bull at the helm, there's no shortage of funds to spend on upgrading the stadium, which they plan to do soon. And those plans do look incredible, but for now, it's a fairly simple stadium, which you might see anywhere in the world. Estadio Urbano Caldera An interesting looking stadium, particularly the unconventional roof canopy on the main stand, but also the stadium has a slightly unusual shape due to the lack of space, it being surrounded by roads on each side of the ground, which forced this stand to be lopsided and this stand to be especially steep, but it looks pretty good. It is actually one of the oldest football stadiums in Brazil, at a little over 100 years old. Estadio do Marumbi. A big red bowl of football. A design that, like I said, seems to be quite popular in Brazil. Not because it's an especially good design for football, but most stadiums were built for football and athletics in mind back then. Unlike most of these style of stadiums, this one has three tiers of seating, which allows some of the seating to be sheltered from the rain, despite the lack of a roof canopy. 
Estadio Ila do Retiro. Uh, this isn't a common design. I like how the stands go from small in the east to tall in the west, allowing those sitting on the bigger western stand a nice view of the river and the city. It also allows those living in the adjacent apartment buildings an excellent unobstructed view of the field. Not that that's important, but yeah. This is a pretty cool stadium to end with. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.